My name is Yan Ko. I'm a PhD student at Dr. Avi Mayan's lab at Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. In the previous lectures, I've introduced the pipeline to analyze RNA-seq data. Another wild, widely used next-generation sequencing technology is ChIP-seq, short for chromatin immunoprecipitation followed by sequencing. It is particularly useful to detect genome-wide uh, DNA binding sites for transcription factors, as well as other DNA binding proteins. Recently, it has been adopted to identify the genome-wide histone modification profiles. In this lecture, I will first introduce the, technolo the ChIP-seq technology and then show you how to use the two popular bioinformatics software called Max and Sizer. Let's first take a quick look at the ChIP-seq technology. Knowing how the ChIP-seq experimental is, is done is helpful to understand downstream data processing procedures. In the DNA binding ChIP-seq experiment, the DNA is first cross-linked to the DNA binding protein and then broken down by sonification or endonuclease digestion. The fragmented DNA bound by protein can be extracted by immunoprecipitation using the specific antibody targeting that protein. DNA is then purified and the protein is removed. The purified DNA will be used to create a sequence library. On the other hand, for a histone modification ChIP-seq experiment, since we are looking for the modification on the histone proteins read by DNA, the material is usually fragmented by amnase digestion. The antibody used in the next step is special antibody that recognizes the modified group. DNA is then separated from the protein and prepared for the sequencing library. The handling of experiment step will affect the ChIP-seq signal detection, for example, the fragmentation bias, PCR bias, etc. Um, particularly, the, spe the specificity and affinity of the antibody brings false positive binding sites. Therefore, in recent years, it becomes routine to perform control experiment using nonspecific antibodies or randomly digested DNA samples. Uh, similar as RNA-seq procedure, the short sequence will first be aligned to, to the reference genome. The ChIP-seq short reads are usually called tags. So ELAND, MAC, Bowtie, VWA, and SOAP are on top of the mostly used algorithm for sequence alignment. The big challenge for ChIP-seq data analysis is to identify the peaks that mark the chromosome regions where the transcription factors bind to or where the histone modification locate. Peaks consist of short reads and ideally it should be straightforward to detect by just counting the sequence mapped to the same region. However, since the machine usually uses uh, only sequences less than 100 BP and the fragmentation is not accurate, the actual binding site is shifted from where the sequence converge, as shown on the figure. Typically, the peak calling software will identify the pseudo peaks that sit at both ends of the actual peak based on the sequence profile and give the most possible location of the actual peak by shifting the peak around it according to its stat statistical algorithm. At the meantime, the control data set is used to define the background noise. For each peak candidate, the signal intensity will be compared to the background, and a significant peak is called only if it's enriched compared with the noise. Significant peaks can be associated to the nearby genes to identify genes that are subject to the transcription factor regulation or histone modification. Here is a workflow for ChIP-seq data processing. Starting from aligned sequences, the pre-processing step is to make sure the input files for peak calling software are in standard format. I will talk about the format in a minute. For histone modification ChIP-seq data, since the length of the DNA wrapping the nucleosome is about 150 BP, we need to shift the tags toward the center of the nucleosome to be more accurate. The bed files is then passed to the peak calling softwares such as Sizer or Max. There are many other software for this step and can be run on various platforms such as R and MATLAB. In the last slides, I attach a summary of some other available software. 
most of the wear will take both experiment and control data set in one run. Now noticing that one chief seek experiment can generate as much as 20 to 30,000 peaks, therefore the routine is the, to narrow down the peaks to some regions of interest, for example, peaks around the transcri transcription starting site, peaks around the gene body, etc. One routine is to calculate the distance from the peak to the transcription starting site and focus on peaks that are located within some defined range, for example, 2K. As I mentioned just now, once we identify the significant peaks of interest, we can map the peaks to the nearby genes and take the gene list for further analysis, such as pathway analysis and the enrichment analysis. Now I want to talk about the sequencing data format. The most common data format you will encounter are listed here. I mentioned about the FASTQ format in the RNA-C lecture. If you haven't watched, this is the format the raw sequence are stored. For each short sequence, four lines of information is written in the FASTQ file. The first line starts with at, is the sequence ID. It's usually generated by the machine. The second line contains the sequence of the short read in ACTG letters. And the third line starts with a plus symbol, it's often optional. Um, the fourth line contains the same number of symbols as the sequence in the second line, and it encodes the quality value of the sequence. The quality value can be read by some software to evaluate the quality of the sequence. Each FASTQ file aggregates millions of reads in the same format. The bad format is usually used to store alignment data. At least three fields are required, the chromosome, the start position, and the end position in the first three columns. Additional fields can be added, such as name of the bat line, scores specifying the darkness of the track, and strand. And this is the most common output files we can get from a sequence aligner. Many ChipSeq software takes the six-column bat files as a standard input format. The WIG format, short for Wiggle, is best used for display of dense continuous data such as GC content, probability scores, and transcriptome data. It's usually generated by the ChipSeq software for upload to genome browser and visualize the ChipSeq peaks. The UCSC Genome Browser website provides details about the five formats frequently used in the genomic field. Some other formats such as the Big WIG, the BAT graph, BAM and SAM worth reading about. So in the following sections, I will show you how to use Max and Sizer, two popular ChIP-seq peak calling software. The major difference between DNA binding sites identification and his modification profiling in terms of peak calling is that DNA binding sites are much smaller and therefore the peaks are usually narrow and sharp. For his modification, the modification groups such as methyl or acetyl group uh, can extend many nucleosomes, and therefore the peaks, or other words, islands, are larger and flatter. Max is perhaps the most widely used peak color for DNA binding sites identification. The current version is Max 2, but I suggest to use the stable version, which is 1.4.2. Unfortunately, it only, it only runs on Linux and Mac, but not Windows. The algorithm ships tags based on the empirical modeling of distance between both ends of a binding site, and it uses a dynamic local estimation uh, to capture local bias in the genome. Once download and installed, Max can be invoked from the terminal by simply typing Max14. If not, you need to manually add a Max command to the system variables. This is not the topic of this lecture, but there are hundreds of instructions online if you Google it. Here I give a list of parameters that are either required by Max or frequently used. The T and C parameter indicate whether the input file is experiment or control dataset. Max will then use the control dataset to construct the background noise. The M parameter specifies the name of this run. It's also used to name the uh, output files. The G parameter tells Max what species is the data coming from and the effective genome size of that species. It can be a number or a string short for the species. 
The F parameter tells Max the input data format. You can set it to Auto and let Max detect. The next three parameters are not necessary for all Max runs. In some cases, if you are interested in the repetitive regions, or if you know that the redundant tags in the ChIP-seq experiment is relevant to the biological question, you can specify how many duplicates can be kept in the peak detection. By default, Max will keep only one or a few tags according to the local distribution model. If duplicates exist, and it is recommended unless you are sure using duplicates will help with analysis. The W parameter tells Max to generate the weak files for visualization. It's time and memory consuming, but I suggest to use it if your computer allows. The call sub peaks function will use an external software peak splitter to further refine the peaks location. The Max website provides explanation of these and other parameters. I highly recommend to check them out before you run Max. Here is a screenshot as Max starts running. It first prints out the parameters we set, and then the info lines below tell us basic information as in making progress. For example, reading the tag files, uh, reading the input tags, and filtering redundant reads. Continues of the max info lines, we can see that at step 3, uh, 14,556 peaks are called. Max will stop at step 5 if no sub peaks calling is requested. The sub peaks will be an additional step and it utilizes the peaks Max just identified. Now let's look at the output files Max gives. The most useful files are the Excel spreadsheet and the peaks bed. The spreadsheet summarizes the given and the default parameters and the complete list of the peaks. The bed file contains the same information but in bed format. It can be uploaded to Genome Browser for visualization and inspection. The summit.bat file gives the location of the peak summit. It's useful to find the binding motifs. Um, the negative peak spreadsheet gives a list of peaks identified from the control data set compared with the treatment. Max also generates an R script that can be directly loaded to R and plot a statistical model based on the input data. The subpeaks bat file is generated by using the call subpeaks parameters and it gives the chromosome coordinates of the subpeaks. This is how does the peak Excel spreadsheet look like. The parameters are, su are summarized at the beginning and the peaks are listed below. For each peak, it gives the location of the peak, the length of the peak, where is the summit of the peak, in terms of BP from the start of the peak, and how many tags are mapped to this peak. It also gives the fold enrichment and the p-value compared with the control data set. The last column gives a false discovery rate. It can be used to narrow down the total number of peaks.